So, passivity, zero state observability for this system, okay. x dot is f x u y equal to h of x. We are going to use this immediately to design stabilizing control. I mean that is the theorem, okay, that is this theorem, okay. What does it say? It says that if you have, if the system that we just talked about is passive with a radially unbounded v of x, okay, no longer just v semi definite positive. We are saying that the V is radially unbounded because obviously we want to use Lyapunov theorem. <laughs> yeah. So, if the system that we just saw is radially is passive with a radially unbounded storage function V of x and zero state observable, then any feedback of this form, okay, where phi is locally Lipschitz in y, phi is zero at zero, and y transpose phi y is strictly positive for all non-zero y this globally asymptotically stabilizes the zero state okay so how do you construct the feedback you basically declare the control to be any minus phi y with these properties lipschitz 0 at 0 and actually positive you know y transpose phi y is positive definite that is its you know uh, for non zero y it is strictly positive okay so uh, a very nice result actually i mean uh, and really 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 useful okay so let's let's just look at what happens okay we will look at the proof yeah in this case we will look at the proof just to see uh, sort of what happens hmm? so uh, so this v that we have we are already assuming that for this system you have a radially unbounded v so we take this as the candidate lyapunov function because it's already c1 right and already radially unbounded so pretty strong properties there and we take this as the candidate Lyapunov function for the closed loop system. So, the system now becomes this because I have, I have plugged in my feedback, yeah, because it is minus instead of control I have minus phi y because that is the feedback I have chosen, okay. And then the output is just h of x, yeah. Further, what do we know about this v of x? We know that the derivative, yeah, this is the passivity property itself that partial of v with respect to x multiplied by this guy is actually less than equal to u transpose y okay and the funny thing is u is just minus phi y so i plug this guy in and by this assumption of positive definiteness what do i have that this guy is negative semi definite okay not negative definite okay remember why because uh, why is it not negative definite actually why shouldn't say because you tell me why why did i say this is only semi definite in not negative definite. The same thing I say every time, almost in every class. Why is this v dot only negative semi definite? What did I do? I took the partial of v so multiplied. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah. It does not have the entire state x. It only has y, which is less. Yeah. So if you don't have all the states, cannot be definite at all. By our assumption, it is sign definite but not positive definite okay so it's only negative semi definite all right excellent good 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 now we are ready to apply the barbashin krasowski lasalle theorem okay now you remember why this zero state observability looks very much like the lasalle invariance condition right because of this because we are going to invoke that because we have st we started with the ready unbounded v but we ended up with a only negative semi definite v dot and in all such situations, we invoke in some version of Lasalle's, yeah, whether it is the original Lasalle invariance or it is Barbashin Krasovsky Lasalle. In this case, we are looking at the stability of the origin. So, it makes sense to use the Barbashin Krasovsky Lasalle. We are not dealing with limit cycles and all that complicated stuff. We are talking about stability of the origin. So, no need for the original Lasalle, no need for the omega and all that. All we need to do is have a radially unbounded V. Excellent, we do have a negative semi definite v dot v do next step construct the set v dot equal to 0 and that is exactly this guy phi transpose y equal to 0 that is guy this yeah and this is um, I am claiming that this is actually equal to um, 
y equal to h of x equal to 0. Why? Why? Why is this equal to this? Absolutely. For for any non-zero y, this is strictly positive. So, if this is actually zero, the only that way that is possible is if y is actually equal to zero. Okay, that's why these two are the same. All right, just by our assumption, nothing bigger than that. Excellent, right? And so, by zero state observability, because this is now that set that we discussed in the zero state observability, right? Exactly. So, in fact, it almost looks like we have defined things and assumed things so that everything works out. Yeah, all right. But these tend to work out a lot of times. It's quite amazing. You will see some examples. So, yeah. So, a lot of times these assumptions do get satisfied. Is what I'm saying. It, it, when I'm stating the theorem, it looks like I made some ridiculous-looking assumptions just to make sure that my theory gives me a stabilizing controller. But that's not the case. You will see it works also at times. Okay. Anyway, let's look at this. So, this is the zero-state observable set. What do we know? we know that no solution but the trivial solution will stay in this set okay when control is zero when control is zero remember okay so let's look carefully what happens in this set y is equal to zero right which means the control which is phi of y minus phi of y is actually minus phi of 0, right, and that is 0, okay. So, on this set, control is 0, okay, which means we are already looking at the uncontrolled system, okay, and we already know by zero state observability assumption that for the uncontrolled system, only the trivial trajectory is inside here, nothing but the trivial trajectory. So, we are done. This is what we need in Barbashin, Krasovsky, LaSalle, right? That the largest invariant set inside E has to be nothing but the zero trajectory, okay? So, we have just completed the arguments, all right? Is that clear? Pretty straightforward proof actually. Make sense? Okay? All right. I don't know what I have written on the sides here. Let us not worry about this. Yeah, you do not have to worry about this. That is fine. Okay, we will we'll look at that later. All right. Uh, now, uh, I already said that it looks like we made up these assumptions so that things go through and all that and it is true to a, some extent. But there are ways to make sure that this goes through, these assumptions satis are, get, are getting satisfied. Okay? One of the methods is passivity by output selection. In a lot of systems that we are designing controllers for, there may not be real outputs. Okay? We might have the flexibility to choose outputs. Uh, so that you have the passivity property with respect to that output. Remember, passivity is a property which is uh, somehow related to input and output. Okay? So, but if you have the choice of choosing an output, you might be in good shape. Okay? So, so that is uh, sort of one of the things. Right? I mean, uh, I think that is what is an example I am trying to give here uh, in a very messy handwriting unfortunately. Um, for example, if you just an example, if I take this system, huh? this is the st standard integrator type system we have been looking at in backstepping. Huh? So, I hope you recognize this system already very quickly. Yeah? In backstepping, you would take x2 is minus x1, then you will take CLF as x1 plus x2 plus x1 squared and so on and so forth. Yeah? You are used to that. For passivity, what I am going to do is, I am not trying to construct a, you know, a, a CLF or anything as of now, right? because uh, we want to use Barbashin Krasovsky type ideas. So, let us see, I will choose my measurement as the position or the x1 state. Okay? If you think of mechanical system, it is the position state. Okay? I just measure one state, x1. What happens? 
so the question is uh, can you choose a v appropriately um, and this is what we have to sort of um, you know think about carefully i'm not sure if i have actually given a v choice here uh, i want this v dot to be less than equal to minus less than equal to u transpose y okay and that is uh, anyway in this case it looks like i didn't actually make a choice proper uh, i think actually let me come back to this later okay i didn't make this choice properly yet okay this is not a complete problem here okay i'll i'll get back to this later but the point is if you have such a system uh, there are ways to uh, sort of use uh, uh, output selection like this to make it passive okay that's the whole idea i'm uh, i this is not a completely worked out example so i'm not going to look at this right now okay let's not worry about it but let's look at the theory first and see what happens because there is already another nice example here okay uh right if you have this kind of a system right which is again a control affine system yeah and as usual you have some states some control lipschitz in x uh and you further uh, suppose you have that your um, drift system is stable okay not asymptotically stable but stable what do i mean by that that partial of v with respect to x times f of x is less than equal to 0 okay this is actually uni uh, i mean this is basically stable unforced system or it's a, basically you are saying that without the control the system is at least stable it is not asymptotically stable not going to converge to the origin or anything but it is at least stable it's not going to escape or anything okay great if you have that then you can choose your y as this okay to make the system passive okay uh do you understand why because of this yeah if i take the same radially unbounded function v okay and i take its v dot along the entire trajectory not just the uncontrolled trajectory the entire trajectory i get this yes it is just del v del x fx del v del x gxu okay and now i'm saying that i want this to be less than equal to y transpose u okay so i'm basically artificially choosing this as y itself okay why how did i get from here to here the first term is less than equal to 0 right so i can pretty much forget this guy okay therefore i know that this is less than equal to this much okay now if i choose my y transpose as the first piece then i'm done right i have my passivity property okay this artificial looking property it's just by choosing an appropriate output i have this passivity property okay again might seem artificial to you but the point is if you have the freedom of choosing the output and your aim is just doing control design it's not this y i don't want you to think of it right now as the actual measurement from sensors and things like that you just think of it as a tool to design your controller okay once you've designed your controller you can figure out how to implement it and all that's a later matter but right now you just using this why even if it looks artificial it's just a way of designing a control law for you all right okay great now um, so we know that this sort of a choice for why will make the system passive okay good so what's the example this sort of example okay um, again not too far fetched not too far from this way yeah i have just given a particular form uh, for the uh, drift term here that's all yeah it's not too far fetched from what we already have yeah uh, now um, let's look at this v of x which is uh, why did i choose this form is because this is actually uh, making the system stable okay so you are trying to make the system stable also yeah suppose i choose my v as x1 to the power 4 over 4 plus x2 squared by 2 okay why did i choose instead of square in both uh, fourth power in one and square in the other anybody ha huh? because there's an x cubed ha huh? just to cancel this x cubed term yeah if you take the derivative what happens yeah if you forget the control Hmm? and you take the derivative it comes out to be zero exactly zero yeah that's why i chose the x1 to the power 4 instead of x1 squared 
just to cancel this x1 cubed term okay make sense this is how we keep manipulating early up of candidates this is a pretty good idea okay great so v dot turned out to be zero and v was radially unbounded what does it mean that the unforced system is stable or uniformly stable in the sense of lyapunov okay okay great now i want to make the system passive right now what do i need for the system to be passive i need this to be less than equal to u transpose y yeah but in this case the right hand side was zero all right so i can i'm free to choose any y actually right because the right hand side is pretty much zero right v dot turned out to be zero so v dot less than equal to u transpose y means i can choose pretty much you know um wait 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 did i get this correct uh v dot is 0 plus x2 times u uh ah okay yeah yeah that's fine so so that's fine uh this is stable so basically what am i choosing as my y uh, i will just go back to this formula i think it's better that i go back to the formula what does this formula give me in this case what is g of x yeah there's no g of x just identity 1 okay and what is um, so again i have to be careful huh? g of x is not 1 uh, what is g of x actually g of x for this example is 0 one yeah it's a second order system so we have to be a little bit careful okay what is partial of v with respect to x yeah partial of v with respect to x is this in fact whatever i mean it i mean it depends on how you want to look at it but typically i take gradients as row vectors hmm so what is this formula give me it gives me what it just gives you y equal to x2 right partial of v with respect to x multiplied by partial of v with respect to x multiplied by g of x is just x2 right so so what our claim is that the system is passive with y equal to x2 okay okay on top of this in fact it turns out that in this case my system is also zero state observable with this y how do you have to, how do you claim zero state observability unfortunately i cannot pull it up but yeah how do you claim zero state observability what do you need to check yeah in the set h of x equal to 0 only the zero trajectory exists so here what is it what is the set Uh, h of x equal to zero. It is x two equal to zero. Okay, and then I am sort of invoking Lasalle invariance type ideas. Yeah, similar ideas, right? If x two has to be zero, what is the largest invariant set inside x two equal to zero set? X two dot also has to be zero. That's how we do it, right? And if x two dot has to be zero, what is my dynamics? X one dot equal to x two. Sorry. Uh, x2 dot equal to zero, right? I just proved x2 dot equal to zero. I need x2 dot equal to zero. So if x2 dot equal to zero, if you look at the dynamics of x2 without the control, because we are talking about the uncontrolled system solution. We are not talking about the huh? for the uncontrolled system. If x2 dot has to be zero, then x1 also has to be zero. That's the only way. Yeah. because if x1 is non zero and anyway there is no control then x2 will move away right from the zero value therefore you cannot stay in this set y equal to zero okay so the only way this can happen is if x1 is also zero therefore we have just 
shown that the largest invariant set inside y equal to 0 is both x1 and x2 equal to 0. All right, make sense. All right, so this y is not just giving us passivity but also zero state observability. So you know pretty much immediately that I can apply this theorem. Okay, I can apply this theorem to construct a st asymptotically stabilizing feedback, not just stable, the system has stability, but if you want asymptotic stability, you can immediately use this. Okay, essentially you just need a function of y, what is in the, what is it in this case, is just a function of x2. Yeah, so that is the cool thing, interesting thing if you may, that you only need a function of x2 in the control, you do not even need the first state. Yeah, so if you are a control engineer or a practitioner, you can pretty much say that I only need to measure velocities to implement a controller for this system, because it is only a function of x2, because I just, um, so basically if you think about it, what would I choose as my control? My requirement for the control are that uh, phi is Lipschitz, phi 0 is 0 and y transpose phi y is strictly positive for all non-zero y, okay. And in this case we have chosen y is x2, okay. So what is it? I just choose my control as this guy, just minus k x2 for example. Yeah, I know that this is at 0 value of uh, output, control is 0, right. I also know that y transpose phi y is basically just k x2 squared, in fact, yeah, okay. So therefore, it is strictly positive, I mean it is 0 only when the state is 0, okay. Therefore, this is a valid control and that and that is fine, I mean it is just looks like a uh, you know this becomes the control law, yeah, as a function of the state x2, this is the controller, okay. But I can do even better, I can actually design a saturated controller, which is again something that lot of engineers care about, that the control does not have large magnitudes. So all, uh, all I need to do is I, I need to satisfy these properties, right. So what will I do? Instead of choosing k x2, I take k tan hyperbolic x2. What does the tan hyperbolic function do? It takes any argument and it fits within plus minus 1. It is a saturation function, yeah. It is a smooth saturation function. You can also have non smooth saturation function, like you know, like a this can be a non smooth saturation function, but this is sort of a smooth saturation function, okay. So instead of taking minus k x2, I can take minus k tan hyperbolic x2, all right. And this is a very nice function, it is 0 only at 0, so therefore it satisfies this property also, right. It is actually, it, it, it maps exactly, like if it is, if your uh, y is like this, then this becomes, ah sorry, like this, yeah, so it never, yeah it is like this, yeah, it, when y is positive, tan hyperbolic y is positive, when y is negative, tan hyperbolic y is negative, it is 0 only at 0, it is a actually a sign, uh, a mapping which maintains the sign also, yeah? so it is a very nice mapping, it is just saturating it, okay. So minus k tan, tan hyperbolic x2 is also a saturated control choice that you can do and in that case your control is just lying between these two, yeah, this, the, it is flipped just because of the negative sign, that is all, okay. So, uh, if you have the ability to choose an output, yeah, which will make the system passive and also zero state observable, then you can directly apply this result, okay. Uh, so in this case also, for a system like this also, for a very general case like this, you will have to think it will not, see in this case what did we have? We sort of assume that your f of x is a stable system, gives you a stable system, okay. In this case uh, that is not evident, 
that, that this system is going to be a stable system or not. Okay. If it so happens that this system turns out to be a stable system in the sense of Lyapunov, then of course you can apply the same result. All right. Otherwise, you have to figure out how to play with these terms. Okay. And that is what we will see in the next uh, sort of trick, if I may. Okay.